Okay. Hello again. My name is Emma and welcome to Faith Night Friday. Can't believe it's Friday already, guys. It's Friday. <laughs> anyway, um, we're just going to jump into it because I do know that um, last week it did take a, a little bit of me trying to read and um, to try to give my opinion about what we were reading about. And the last one that we were reading about, and that was, um, I really hate touching these cameras because I always feel like if I touch them, they're going to fall. Okay. Uh, was about the... Um, uh, the Levite and the concubine. Now, as you remember, the concubine, to me, I don't know. To me, I feel like the concubine, even though in, back in those days, it was okay. If, even if you had a wife or wives, it was okay for you to have like a mistress kind of thing. And um, But I believe that that concubine had to be like no more than... I don't think she was older than 17. I, I really don't think so. Um, I, because usually a woman of an older stature, she knows what she's getting into. She knows how to deal with certain things, okay? And at that age, you, you really don't. And um, what, the things that she went through, what happened to her was like, like the craziest thing. You know, even even the Israelites were like, who did this and why? And this kind of thing was never done before. It was like, what's going on? So, so like I said, it was a really grim, grim um, a chapter. And um, yeah, and again, these are stories you're not most likely to hear at church. And given the fact that probably because maybe there's a, a lot of young adults but you can only read the good parts of the Bible to your family. They they got to know everything that's going on, you know, from the Old Testament and the New Testament. You just can't leave out, just, you know, read the good parts and not ex explain about all the other stuff that happened. The, all the, the grim parts, all the, you know, um, everything that the Israelites went through so um yeah they need to know about that too because even though it was a grim story we was still because you have to remember the Bible's word we get we're receiving knowledge from each chapter from each verse we're receiving knowledge so if something is in there, it's for a reason because it's trying to teach us something. So yeah, it might be, you know, it might sound terrible, but there was a reason behind that. There was a reason why this girl was chosen, you know, to be a concubine and there was a reason why she died. And of course, it would all lead, lead up to the Israelites going to war. Okay, so we are still... Um, the Bible in 52 weeks. That's the one I'm doing. And right now, I think I left off at... Uh, do, 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 do. We did 20, right? So I left off... Yeah, we did 19. So we still have 20 and 21 to cover. Okay. So this one I'm only going to do half because 20 is a very long chapter. So I'm only I'm only going to do half of this one and then we'll get to the other half next week. So it'll be part one and then part two. So this one is called, and I think I mentioned it before, Israel prepares for war. So I'm going to put that down and I'm going to say Israel prepares for war part one. And then, you know, next week it'll be Israel uh, prepares for war part two. So that's going to be the um, the beginning of what's going to happen, you know, um, for that uh, for that chapter. Okay, so Israel uh, was prepared for war, and all the people of Israel from Dan in the north to the Beersheba 
in the south as well as from the land of Gilead or Gilad uh, in, in the east answered the call. They gathered in one body in, in the Lord's presence at Mizpah. The leaders of all the tribes of Israel were present at this gathering of the God's people. And there were 400,000 foot soldiers. Meanwhile, the people of Benjamin heard that all the other Israelites had gathered at Mizpah. And the, the, Israel asked, the Israelites asked, tell us how was this crime committed? So they, I, evidently they found that about what happened. And they found out that this, this Levite cut this woman in 12 pieces and he sent them to each of the tribes, the, the 12 tribes of Israel. So each tribe got a little bit of her body, which is kind of like insane. Um, okay, who committed the crime? The murder, the murder, and the murderer, the Levite, whose concubine had been murdered, answered, My concubine and I went to Gibeth in the territory of Benjamin to spend the night. The men of Gibeth came to get me and surrounded the house at night. They intended to kill me. Instead, they, 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 instead they raped my concubine and she died. But he doesn't say, but I'm the one that threw her out to the wolves and that's why she died. <laughs> he ducked out that part. <laughs> I didn't do anything. They didn't, you know, they just... They grabbed her and raped her and, you know, abused her and everything, but I have nothing to do with it. You know, at least that's what I'm getting, you know. Okay, so um, they they intended to kill me. Instead, they raped my concubine and she died. I took her body, cut it into pieces, and sent one piece to each of the 12 tribes of Israel. These people have committed an evil and immortal act among us. All of you here are Israelites. What are you going to do about this? Now, I'm not sure if the Levites the ones that's, that's saying this. I don't know. All the people stood up together and said, None of us, whether he lives in the tent or in the house, will go home. This is what we will do. We will draw lots and choose some men to attack Gabish. Gabet. Gabet. One tenth of the men of Israel will provide food for the army, and the others will go and punish Gebeth for this immoral act that they have committed in Israel. So all the men in Israel assembled with one purpose, to, to attack the town. The Israelites' tribes sent messengers all through the territory of the tribes of Benjamin to say, What is this crime that you have committed? Now hand over those perverts in Gebeth so that we can kill them and remove this evil from Israel. But the people of Benjamin paid no attention to the other Israelites. From all the cities of Benjamin, they came to Gebeth to fight the other people of Israel. They called out 26,000 soldiers from their city that day. Besides these, the citizens of Gebeth gathered 700 specialty chosen men who were left-handed. Every one of them can sling a stone at a strand of a hair and never miss. Now, not counting the tribes of Benjamin, the Israelites gathered 400,000 trained soldiers. So, they're going to war to, um, to the, Benj the Benjamites to, you know, to get, you know, to get these people who done this this thing, and the, to me, the, I don't know. It's like I understand that you didn't want to get killed, but you didn't have to throw your concubine to them. There, there had to be a I don't know. There had to be something different that he could have done. Remember, he was he was supposed to be a um, a spiritual leader, and you couldn't think of something else. Okay. So the Israelites went to the to the place of worship at Bethel, and then and there they asked God, which tribe should attack the Benjamites first? And the Lord answered the tribe of Judah. So the Israelites started out the next morning and camped near the city of Gebeah. They went 
to attack the, the army of Benjamin and place the soldiers in position facing the city. The army of Benjamin came out of the city and before the day was over, they had killed 22,000 Israelite soldiers. Wow, that's a lot of Israelite soldiers. Um, then the Israelites went to the place of worship and mourned in the presence of the Lord until evening. They asked him, should we go again into battle against our, our brother, our brothers and the Benjamites? Now that's sad because these are from their, like, it's not like they were fighting like another country or another, I don't know, tribes that weren't from their tribes. They were from the same tribes. Which makes, you know, kind of like, to me, matters worse. You're fighting your own people. That's kind of what we do with this day. Okay. So, the the Lord, the Lord answered yes. So, the Israelites' army was enraged. And they placed their soldiers in position again. When they had been the day before, they marched against the army of the Benjamin a, a second time. And for the second time, the Benjamites came out of Gabayath, and this time they killed 18,000 trained Israelite soldiers. Then all the people of Israel went up to Bethel and mourned. They sat there in the Lord's presence and did not eat until evening. They offered fellowship sacrifices and burnt some sacrifices whole, all in the presence of the Lord. God's covenant... God's covenant box was there at Bethel in those days, and <coughs> Phinehas, fi 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 the son of Eleazar, and the grandson of, grandson of Aaron was in charge of it. The people asked the Lord, should we go out to fight our brothers, the Benjamites, again, or <coughs> should we give up? <coughs> and the Lord answered, fight tomorrow I will give you victory over them so the Israelites put some soldiers in in hiding around Gibeah then for the third straight day they marched against the army of Benjamin and placed their soldiers in battle position facing Gibeah as they had done before the Benjamites came out to fight and were led away from the city as they before they began killing some Israelites in the open country on the road to Bethel and on the road to Gabayath. The bent, they killed about 30 Israelites. Now, the, the amount is getting less and less. I mean, they're, they're killing, you know, soldiers left and right. And um, the Benjamites said, we've beaten them just as before. Um, and it's like, you know, they got this. They're like, they're not worried. We beat, we beat them twice. This is the third time. Yeah. So then the Israelites had planned to retreat, lead away from the city onto the road. So when the main army of the Israelites pulled back and regrouped at Baltimore, the, the men surrounding Gabaya suddenly rushed out of their hiding places in the rocky country around the city. 10,000 men special chosen out of all Israel attacked Gabayath and the fighting was hard. The Benjamites had not realized that they were about to, about to be destroyed. The Lord gave Israel victory over the army of Benjamin. The Israelites killed 25,100 of the enemy that day and the Benjamites realized they were defeated. How the Israelites won. The main body of the Israelites army had retreated from Benjamin, the Benjamites, because they were relying on the men that they had put in hiding around Gabayath. They spread out in the city and killed everyone there. The main Israelites army and the men in hiding had arranged a signal. When they saw a big cloud of smoke going up of the town, the Israelites out on the battlefield were to turn around. By this time, the Benjamites had already killed 30 Israelites. They told themselves, yes, we've beaten them just as before. This, then the signal appeared, a cloud of smoke began 
to go up from the, from the town. The Benjaminites looked behind them and were amazed to see the whole city going up in flames. Then the Israelites turned around and the Benjaminites were thrown into panic <coughs> because they realized they were about to be destroyed. They retreated from the Israelites and ran towards the open country, but they could not escape. They were caught between the main army and the men who were now coming out of the city. So they were kind of like trapped. So they had almost like a signal that they had prepared and God said, okay, you're going to do it this way and I'm going to get them in, a mid in the middle and they're not going to be, they're not going to be, be able to go here or forward or backwards. You're going to have them, you know, right where I want them. Um, <coughs> So they were caught between the main army and the men who were now coming out of the city and were destroyed. The Israelites had the enemy trapped. Without stopping, they pursued them as far at the point of Gabayat, killing them as they went. 18,000 of the best of Benjamin's soldiers were killed. The others turned and ran towards the open country to Ramin Rock. 5,000 of them were killed on the roads. The Israelites continued to pursue the rest of the rest to Gudam, killing 2,000. In all, 25,000 Benjamites were killed that day, and all them brave soldiers. Wow. They did their diligent, diligent duties. You know, they they fought, and but they lost. Um, but 600 men were able to escape to the country to Remen. Remen Rock, and they stayed there for, for, for they stayed there four months. The Israelites <clears throat> turned back against the rest of the Benjamites and killed them all, men, women, and children, and animals as well. They were burned. They they burned every town in the area. Now the thing is that you have to remember how many escaped. They were killing in 25,000. Wait, wait. The others turned 18,000 of the best Benjamin soldiers. The others, the others, I don't know how many were the others, ran towards the open country. <coughs> um, in the open road, the Israelites continued to. Um, okay, so there was a, a, oh, 25,000. No, those were killed. Okay, so. A good, it doesn't say how many um, escaped, but it had to be a good number of them, or or maybe not a lot. And you're going to find out why, because later on, they're going to need those Benjamites. It's like later on, you kind of like they find out that you you just killed all of them, and how are we going to um, continue? with our tribe so that's going to lead up to this like you, what did you guys do <laughs> you know like oh oh my god <laughs> so, huh? uh i don't know maybe another five minutes why would you need well i was gonna say i was wants cheesecake but he you need your help because his legs broke okay give me a minute so yeah so it's all leading up to you know again they're they're trying to rectify what happened, you know, to of the, of the crime that was committed. Okay, so that's where we are now. Uh, so, yeah, so that's how the Lord ended up hap helping Israel against the Benjamites. So what he did was that he, he got them trapped. And that's how they ended up having a uh, victory. Okay, so let's see. I'll be over there in a minute, okay? You can take it out and start getting, getting your plate ready. But my legs broke. How am I supposed to do that? Okay. Okay. So in Judges 20, the chapter is a good... Okay, so this is the, the Nelson's quick reference. This is what I go off of. Because I, I could always Google it, and I could always Google more information and do more research. But... And I'll probably do that starting um, in Ruth, because we're going to end up going to the book of Ruth. Okay, so this is a commentary, and you can find commentaries everywhere. You don't even have to go to a bookstore these days. They're, they're all online. Um, okay, so chapter 20 
is a good um is a good illustration of James 3 13 and 18. When we operate on the basis of human wisdom, we create one problem after another. But when we pause to pray and seek the mind of the Lord, it shows us what to do. So that's what they had to do. They had to eventually like, <clears throat> let's do this, let's do that. And then they were realizing that, yeah, we're losing here. Something's wrong. You know, like we're not, we're not overthrowing this, this tribe and, and they're slaughtering, you know, <clears throat> all of our people. Um... So then they had to, then they finally had to, uh, what do you call it, think of another way. And they did. They asked the Lord, you know, what should we do? Uh, the Benjaminites did not seek the Lord, admit their guilt, or repent of their sins. There can be no peace unless sin is put away. But the people of Benjamin would not would not judge their own people in Gabayah for because of what they did. It's like, you know, really was, they didn't have no laws, um, no government at that time. So everybody was running wild and doing whatever they wanted to do. So you, when they went to the Levites, that old man's house and the Levite was there, you know, as you remember, he said, oh, we, want, we saw the guy that went in there. Give him to us so we can, you know, do whatever um so there was no like restraint no nothing stopping them which was kind of a scary thing you know and um okay so the benjamins did not seek the lord and met their guilt or repent of their sins uh there can be no peace unless sin is put away but the people of benjamin would not judge their own people in gabayat so shall you put away the evil person from among you is re repeated nine times in Deuteronomy and God expected his people to obey God's people today need to deal with sin in their lives um, unconfessed sin is the uncontrolled disease it spreads and it kills Charles Spurgeon said Sin is the mother and nurse of all evil, the egg of all mischief, the fountain of all bitterness, the root of misery. So sometimes it's, it's better off, you know, if you have sin in your life, get rid of it because it's, it's just going to make matters worse. And then the worst part is when trouble hits and you try to do things your own way it's not going to work because you don't you don't have you don't have God's wisdom to know how to get out of a certain situation and and sin blocks it kind of like blocks you from receiving that wisdom to know what to do so when you have sin in your life get rid of it and you know put on the spirit the spirit of god in you because the spirit of god it gives you wisdom and it gives you um the knowledge of what to do right now and it alerts you so usually when you have that kind of help in in your body in your spirit then you don't have no fears about anything or who's going to come and attack you or you always looking behind your shoulder because sin will create that kind of it traps you just like it did you know with the benjamites they had they couldn't go forward they couldn't go back you're trapped so sin ends, ends up trapping you and then you you as much as you want to get out from where you're at you can't because you have no way out you have no connection to, to, for somebody to say, I'll do this or do that. You don't have the wisdom. So better for you, get rid of whatever sin that you have in your mind, in your soul, in, you know, in your body, just, or mentally. If you know you did something wrong, repent, repent and get rid of it. This way you can start doing, and, and sin, well, you have the Ten Commandments. And those are 
by far the ultimate sense. If you have any one of those, by golly, get rid of it. Do right. Get ask for forgiveness for for whatever you know, you know, went with that kind of sin by the Ten Commandments. All the other little, all the other sins, you know, that you go through in life, they just add up and they just build up. It's like having one lie after another, after another, after another. And then your lie gets so big that you, you just start making more lies on top of that lies and on top of that lies. And you never end it. And then it just, it, it just gets you so much in trouble that, you know, you, you just, your best solution to that, stop lying and start telling the truth. And that'll end that. And that's sometimes what we have to do. We just have to anchor ourselves down and do what the word says. Live by the word and not by the sword. You heard that one before, guys. <laughs> okay, guys. So, oh, boy. Okay, guys. So, thank you so much for being here sharing this time with me. And we're going to be going into chapter 21. And um, I'm going to try to take it a little bit more slowly. I am going to take a few, um, try to catch up on, uh, especially on Ruth, because I really want to get into the book of Ruth. But, um, okay, guys, so like a fish in a sea, so glad you caught me. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and definitely comment. Bye!